Okay, so yesterday we started talking about complex numbers and all the things you can do, the multiplying, the adding, the um, simplifying, the rationalizing, and then finish with the quadratic formula when you've got negatives underneath your square roots. So with number one, you just simply take this, distribute the nine to both. This is gonna be 45i minus 27i squared, and then the i squared gets replaced with negative one. So I get 45i plus 27. And then you want to write it in standard form, which means the i comes last. So it would be 27 plus 45i, and that's how your answer should be written, okay? So sometimes it will say it in the instructions to write it in standard form. Sometimes it won't. It's implied from here on out. You need to simplify, and you need to put it in standard form. Number two, the first thing you got to do is what? Take out those negatives, right? So take, take, take out the I. So it could be like this or the I could be at the end either way. And then you need to break out your um, product. So this is 2 and 10, 2 and 5. There's two twos. So a 2 goes to the outside with the I. The 5 doesn't have a match, so it stays underneath. The 45 is 5 and 9, which is 3 and 3. The 3s are doubled, so those come to the outside with the 3 that's already there. 9i and the 5 is left underneath again. They both have an i and they both have a root 5, so I would add them. 11 root 5i, or again, you can write it as 11i root 5. I'll take either one of these. Just be careful not to put the i underneath the root. <coughs> Questions on that one? Which one, for which one? Um, for the second one? It. So the two threes come out as one three, but there's already a three there. Oh. So you multiply those together. Number three, you've got a, um, an I in your denominator, which is like having a square root in the denominator can't stay there. So you're gonna multiply both the top and the bottom by the conjugate, which is five plus I. You change the sign on the I, okay? So my numerator is 25 plus 5i plus 5i plus i squared. Okay, so that's 25 plus 10i, and then this is plus a negative one, so that's minus one. 24 plus 10i all over, wait, did I do the same thing? Yeah, 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 same thing. So it's five squared plus one squared, which is 25 plus one, which is 26, that's a shortcut and then split it, so it's 24 over 26, plus 10 over 26, I, and then reduce it, this is 12 over 13, plus five over 13, I. Questions on that one? So, so when, um, it says, if there's a plus on the outside, and if, um, like I squared, like the I, the negative one stays within the parentheses. So then that makes it a positive one? Yeah, it doesn't really matter that time, but if there was a number there, then yeah. When, you, when you're when you replacing I squared, you would replace it inside of parentheses, yeah. If it was minus I squared, then it becomes minus a negative one, which becomes plus one. Okay, and then the last one was your quadratic formula. So A is, six, a is 16, B is negative four, and C is three. And I get negative, negative B, which becomes positive four plus and minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times t all over two times a. So I get four plus and minus the square root of 16. This is 64 times three is 192 over 32. I get four plus and minus the square root of six, seven, negative 176, is that right? Yeah. Uh, over 32, and then you gotta break this down into a product of prime. So two goes into here, it would be 88 times, two goes in there, 44 times, two, 22, two, and 11. For each pair of twos, one's gonna go to the outside. So that's one, two, then there's another two, the 11 stays underneath, and this is negative, which means the I is gonna come to the outside as well. So I end up with four, plus and minus two times two, which is four. The I that's out there, the 11 stays underneath over 32. 
And then you can either reduce and then split or split and reduce one way or the other fours going into each of these. So I'd get one over eight plus and minus root 11 over eight and the i's at the end. So on a standardized test or like web assign, it, it wants it separated. If it can be if it can be simplified separate, then it has to be separated. But if they can all be simplified the same way, then I'm okay with you keeping it as one. That's fine. Yeah, as long as it can. But if it can be reduced separately, so let's say there's a 16 there, 16 over 32 reduces separately, then fours into both. It has to be split. Yeah. Okay, so this is from, this is seven from homework from last night. The first thing you want to do is take out the I. So this is I root 128 plus I root 704. Okay. So this is where, like, sometimes it's easier just to see the perfect square and separate it out. Like, 64 is not so bad. This is like 2 and 64. And then I can actually say 64 square rooted would be 8 and 8. So I can bring out the 8. So some of you are pretty good at doing that. But then something like 704 is not as obvious. And this is where that factor tree comes into play. I know it's divisible by 2. So I would do 2. And that goes three, five, 352 times. Then I would go 2 and again. And it's 1, 7, 6. Go 2 and again. It's 8, 8. That's 2 and 44. That's 2 and 22. That's 2 and 11. And then for each pair of twos, that's one, that's gonna go to the outside. That's two, that's gonna go to the outside. That's three, that's gonna go to the outside. So I have two times two times two i, and then the 11 is left underneath. So this is eight i root two plus eight i root 11. If you got there and it multiplied it wrong, it's just because WebAssign wanted you to take the eight out. So it would have been eight, root two the way that they wrote it was like that okay i'll take either one for a quiz but that's all it just factored it out then number nine said simplify the complex number so you guys had different things inside like underneath that root but they were all a negative which means this is i root six raised to the six i to the sixth root six to the sixth okay and then this is i squared raised to the third power which means there are three negative ones if there's three negative ones what's my answer from that negative one and then there are three root six squareds what's root six squared what happens when you square square root it's just what's underneath so this was 6 to the 3rd, which is 216. <coughs> so the numbers were different, but that process there was exactly the same for each of them. I, I worked it out as root 6 to the 6th power, or negative root 6 to the 6th power, but I'm going to work out the negative 2. So remember that the negative means the i is going to come to the outside, right? So this becomes i <coughs> times root 2 raised to the 6th power. So this is i to the 6th times root 2 to the 6th. And then yesterday we talked about that we want to break the i's down in pairs, right? For every pair of i, it's going to be negative 1. So this is really like i squared raised to the third power. And i squared by itself is negative 1. So the negative 1 raised to the third power becomes what? Negative, negative 1. Then I've got my root 2 to the sixth. So I can do root 2 times root 2 times root 2 times root 2. I'm going to run out of space. Root 2, root 2. I can do it six times. And what happens when you multiply a root by itself? What is root two times root two? two? Just two. So for every pair of these, I just get two. Two times two times two in this case is eight. So this would be negative eight. But let's say this number was bigger than six. You're not gonna wanna write out like 20 root twos. Do the same thing with roots that you do with the i's. So if it's root two squared, it would be raised to the third power. And then all these roots squared become two, and then you just have to raise it to whatever power's on the outside. So the other example was six. It was six times six times six, which is 216, okay? But really all you have to do is kind of group them. Same thing happens with roots. You can be simplified in pairs just like your eyes. Good? Okay.
Talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra today. Super exciting stuff, folks. This is what's going to be on your quiz yesterday stuff and today stuff. Okay, quizzes again day after tomorrow. But it will be 2, 4, and 2, 5. This is a lot like what we did in 2, 3 when you were given roots. It's just that now your roots are involving eyes. Okay, so a lot of it's the same process, factoring, <laughs> linear factors, all that stuff. Synthetic division comes back today, long division, all of it. It's just that now you've got eyes involved. All right, so the linear factorization theorem says that if f of x is a polynomial of degree n, remember degree is highest exponent, where n is greater than 0, which means you actually have a variable, then f of x has precisely n number of roots. So it has the same number of roots as its highest exponent. But now we're talking about all different kinds of roots. So these are positive roots, negative roots, imaginary roots, and real roots. So these are just some rough examples of all the different kinds of roots that you can have. We can have positive roots and negative roots that are rational, okay, which means they can be written as a whole number or as a fraction. You can have irrational roots like square roots of non-perfect squares. And now we can include complex roots which are going to involve i. So if I look at a function and I say that it's raised to the sixth power, if it's the highest exponent is six, that means there are six roots. That doesn't mean there's six real roots. That doesn't mean there's six distinct roots. They could be duplicated, okay, but they can also be imaginary. So example one just says find the exact number of roots. What am I looking for? Highest exponent. So how many roots does this function have? Three. Easy stuff, right? Probably not a quiz question. But if you have a question that says find the roots and you solve them and you only have two, you know you did something wrong. Okay, solve the function. So f of x equals x squared plus 36. Can I factor that? Yes. Can you? Yeah. Nope, it's on the difference of two squares, right? So what are the other options if it's quadratic? I can use the even root property, subtract. So I would say 0 equals x squared plus 36. Subtract the 36. Square root both sides, making sure I put a plus and minus in front of that negative 36. And I get x equals plus and minus 6i. Two roots, which matches the exponent, which is 2. I could have used the quadratic, but that's a heck of a lot of extra work. Way easier to use even root. Questions on that one? Okay, B, f of x equals x to the third plus 25x. So I get 0 equals x to the third plus 25x. Where do I start there? Take out an x. Good. Can't factor it any further, but I can split it and solve it. So I get x equals 0, x squared plus 25 equals 0, x squared equals negative 25, <laughs> square root both sides, plus and minus 5i. Again, highest exponent is 3, and I have 3 roots. Still with me? All right, now directions have changed. It says find all the zeros of the function and write the polynomial as a product of linear factors. So one, I'm doing the same. I'm looking for the zeros. But then I'm writing it as a product of linear factors. So remember, this is my x minus times x minus whatever my factors are. So there's two parts to this. Solve it and then find it. Okay, look at A. Can you factor that? No. What, can you use even root property? Yes. Nope. Even root property only comes if it's something squared, like standard form, right? Yeah. What do you have to do? Quadratic. Quadratic. Or you could complete the square if you want to, and then use even root. So A is 1. B is negative 3. C is 1. So 
I should have gotten three plus and minus root five over two. Everybody get that? That's your zero, right? Now, if I want to write that as a product of linear factors, there are actually two zeros there. Three plus root five over two, three minus root five over two. Those are my zeros. So if I want to write them as a product of linear factors, I have to do x minus three plus root five over two, x minus three minus root five over two. The negative is going to get distributed to both part of my numerator and then a linear factor cannot have a fraction so how do I get rid of dividing by 2 multiply, multiply by 2 there's nothing to multiply but that x so that's what's gonna get it so this is 2x minus 3 minus root 5 2x minus 3 plus root 5 and that is the product of linear factors. So it can't have a squared and it can't have a fraction. You've got to get rid of it. If you had extra time, you could actually take and foil those out and check to make sure you got your question. Okay, again, big if, if you've got the extra time. But you can do that. If I foil that out, I should get my question. Okay, so I broke it down right, and then I could break down one further. If you didn't, you could still solve it using the even root property, but I will tell you that when you go to put it back in, you have to separate it out because it's linear factors. Okay. So when you get to, and, and this is probably the most common mistake people make up to this point, is not square rooting the four, so be careful. Make sure you, that square root is going over both the nine and the four. So it ends up being plus or minus three i over two, or three over two i. So those are all my zeros, but then it says write it as a product of linear factors. So I would have to do x. My, or x minus a negative three over two i, which becomes x plus three over two i, then x minus three over two i, then x minus a negative three over two, which becomes plus three over two, and x minus three over two. So you can save yourself this step, which we're about to do to get rid of the two, by just coming back up here and using those linear factors if you factored it further. If you didn't, if you left it and did the even root property, then you're gonna be where we are now. But what's wrong with those? What did I say your linear factors could not have? The fraction. So every single one of them is gonna get multiplied by two. I get two x plus three i, two x minus three i, two x plus three, and two x minus three. That's the product of linear factors. And that is what, if you foiled out, you would get back your original question. And again, go back to what the first thing we talked about, the degree here is four, you should have four roots. I have four roots, I have four factors. Questions on that one? Wait, so why don't you factor the left side? Because it's not the difference of two squares, right? So it can't be factored that kind of factoring has to have a negative in between because it's a difference of two squares. So start off with the negative in between them? Yep, so it would have had to have been something squared minus something squared. Oh, okay. Yep, not plus. We good so far? So think that you're gonna get any kind of factoring thrown at you, you gotta be prepared for all of it. You're gonna have greatest common factor, you're gonna have difference two squares, you could have perfect square, you could have four terms, you get a factor by grouping. 
okay? You gotta make sure that you're comfortable with factoring. It's definitely going anywhere. All right, it's like a paragraph for instructions. Break it down and read it. It says, find the possible zeros of the function. So what does just possible zeros mean? That's the number of zeros. What's the possible zeros? I think I heard it. It's all of the real imaginary, but it's also last over first. Yes? Possible zeros? This is last over first, plus and minus, last over first. Then it says, then find the actual roots. How am I going to find the actual roots? This is where I'm going to either factor, use the quadratic, whatever it is, to get to the actual zeros. Okay? Write the polynomial as a product of linear factors. This is my x minus times x minus times x minus. Use the factorization to determine the x-intercepts of the graph of the function. So if I have a bunch of roots mixed together, how do I know which ones are going to be the x-intercepts? The real ones. Nothing with an i is going to be on my graph, okay? So x-intercepts would be the real roots. And then the last thing it says, to so use your graphing utility to verify the zeros are the only x-intercepts. So when we get there, we'll graph it. All right, so first thing, looking at my function, is it in order from decreasing degree? Yes. So plus and minus last over first would be the factors of 16, 1, 16, 2, 8, 4, and 4 over the factors of the first, which is 1. So this is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Those are my possible roots. That's the first question. Second part said find the actual roots. Can I factor this? Do you factor five terms? Nope. nope. Okay, which means you have to do what? Synthetic division. Yay! Just when you thought you missed it. Start with one. One, negative four, eight, negative 16, 16. Bring down the one. Not gonna work. Go to negative one. Also not going to work. Go to two. And there's the first one that works. So 2 is one of my zeros. And then I have to take what's left. This is the remainder. 0 is the remainder. Negative 8 is the constant. 4 gets the x. 2 gets the x squared. Negative 2 gets the x squared. And 1 gets the x to the third. So x to the third minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8. Can that be factored? Different, or group factor by grouping, right? Take out an x squared here. I get x minus 2 and then x squared plus 4. This gives me x is 2. This gives me x squared equals negative 4. x equals plus and minus the square root of negative 4 plus and minus 2i. So now my zeros are not only the 2 I got from my synthetic division, but another 2, a negative 2i, and a positive 2i. Why is it important to acknowledge that there are two 2s? The multiplicity is going to do what to this graph? Make it bounce. So when we graph it, it should bounce. But the other thing is, if I only account for one, two, there's three roots. And we said there had to be four. Okay? So even though they repeat, you still need You can either write two and put a two underneath it. That's fine. Give me a multiplicity of it. But you have to know that there are two of those roots. So now here's my actual roots. Product of linear factors was next. So I get x minus two, x minus two, x plus 2i, x minus 2i. You can't leave it as x minus 2 squared because that's not linear. Has to be linear. Where'd yep. you get the two twos again? One from the synthetic, one from factoring it down here. Okay. 
So we assume that when we look at this graph, what are going to be my x-intercepts? Two. Two. Just two, right? So if I pull in my graph, not like that. I don't, God bless you. I only have one zero, it's two. I only have one x-intercept, it's two. And we said that the multiplicity was two, so it should bounce. So everything that you kind of know up to this point can be put together, overlap, all that information, all that knowledge should make sense, okay? The eyes are not gonna appear on your graph. Questions? Okay, so just like, Conjugate pairs, uh, remember we said yesterday that the conjugate would be the, the sign in, in between, right? So if it was 2 plus 3i, then the conjugate is 2 minus 3i. These have to come in pairs. So if you are given one imaginary root, then its conjugate is already an imaginary root. So if I told you that a function had a root that was 2i, then its conjugate, which is negative 2i, is also a root. If I had 2 plus 3i, then 2 minus 3i is also a root, okay? They have to come in pairs, which if you go back to multiplicity, or sorry, possible roots, when we said we were subtracting 2, if I was 2 or 0 possible roots, this is why, because those additional roots can be imaginary, and imaginary roots come in pairs. So this says find a polynomial function with a real coefficient that has the given zeros. So we're given zeros, okay? For A, we're given 3, and we're given 3 plus I. But what do we already know before we start? 3 minus, three minus I has to be another 0. So now these go behind X minus, so it would be X minus 3, X minus 3 plus I, and X minus 3 minus I. So the negative gets distributed. And then I want to work them out. My advice is do the I's first because if you multiply conjugates, they should cancel out. So after that point, you shouldn't have any more I's. So I still have X minus 3, but then first would be X squared minus 3X plus IX. Then negative 3, negative 3X plus 9 minus 3I. Then negative i, negative ix, plus 3i, minus i squared. Now again, if you've done it correctly, your i's will cancel out. I have a positive ix and a negative ix. I have a positive 3i and a negative 3i. And then I have minus an i squared. This becomes minus negative 1, which becomes plus 1. So then I get x minus 3 times x squared. There's two negative 3x's, so negative 6x. And then positive 9, positive 1, positive 10. And now I distribute again. x goes to all 3. Negative 3 goes to all 3. Combine your like terms. And then how do I show this is a function? Good. Don't forget it. So be really careful with these. First of all, if you have an I and your answer, something's wrong. There should not be an I, right? Because you're canceling them out, conjugates should cancel out. Two, I'll show you in a second, there's a shortcut just like the one that we use for roots, but it's a little different because of the I's. So I'll, I'll show you that one, but again, be really careful with it. So if I look at B, I've got negative two, 
I've got five minus three I, which means I automatically know I have what? Five plus three I. So I've got X plus two, X minus five plus three I, and X minus five minus three I. Now the X plus two is gonna stay on the front, but the shortcut is the same as this, the ones when we did with the, with the square roots. I take the first two terms and square them, so X minus five squared. Normally I subtract what's under the root because that's the same thing as multiplying them because they would be multiplied two times each other and that means it comes outside the root. But for this one, you are going to add, not subtract, because an I squared will change your sign, the number that's in front or the B squared. So the number in front of the I. So if you're using the shortcut, it is the first two terms squared plus, not minus anymore, plus the B squared. So be really careful because it's a different shortcut. It's similar, but it's different. So now for that one, this is still X plus two. This is X squared minus 10X plus 25 plus nine. And then I would distribute the X. Distribute the two. Combine my like terms. Set it equal to F of X. So again, if you doubt yourself on the shortcut or you're, um, you know, you go through it and you're not sure, I would say go stick to the original and expand it. Just be really careful. All right, the last type of question, and there's two examples after this, but this is the last type, okay, is what happens if I give you one root? So if you are given a polynomial function and it says here is one root, that one root is a complex zero, which means it's got i, then you are going to automatically add on its conjugate because you know that that's a pair. And then you actually have two choices. One is use synthetic division with the first one on the outside, then use synthetic division based on that with the second one on the outside, except you're mix missing in i's. So this is where mistakes get made, which is why my suggestion is this method. Take the two roots that you've got, Boil them out or use the shortcut to get one polynomial. It won't have any I's in it if you've done it right. It won't have any I's. That then gets divided using long division into the original polynomial and you'll get the remaining root. Okay? So I'm going to work through this one first. Use the given zero to find all the zeros of the function of f of x equals 2x to the third plus 3x squared plus 50x plus 75. So if I give you that 5i is a root, what else do you know? negative 5i is a root, which means x minus 5i and x plus 5i are factors. I can FOIL those out, but this is an a squared plus b squared scenario, so I can use that shortcut, which would be x squared plus 25. Again, you can FOIL them out, the i's cancel, or you could use the shortcut. So now if this is a factor of that, I can take this, put it on the outside, Adding in the 0x because I'm missing a term. And divide it into it. So this is 2x multiplies times all 3. Change your signs. Multiply times 3, multiply times all these. Change your signs. If you've done it correctly, you should get a remainder of 0. Your last factor is at the top, which means the third 0 there is negative 3 halves. So when it says find all the zeros, it's negative 5i 
positive 5i and negative 3 halves. is same sets of instructions, same function, type of function, except the zero is five plus two i, which means your additional zero is what? Five minus two i. So my factors are x minus five minus two i and x minus five plus two i. So this is the longer shortcut. You can still use the shortcut here, which is x minus five squared plus b squared, which is two squared. And then that goes on the outside. Once you have it set up, then you just use synthetic or long division to divide. So I'd have to multiply by x here. It'd be x to the third minus 10x squared plus 29x. Change your signs. I get 3x squared minus 30x plus 87, multiply by 3, 3x squared minus 30x plus 87. Change your signs. Cancels, cancels, it cancels. Again, your remainder should be 0. The factor at the top is your remaining factor. Set it equal to 0 and get your remaining 0, which is negative 3. So all three of these, the one they included in the beginning, the one you found because of the conjugate, and then the one you found with long division are the zeros of the function. Okay, that's the notes for 2.5. Homework is on Canvas and WebAssign.